What's going on everybody? So today we're gonna to be talking on Poo and sort of the updated build that I'm gonna be going with on on Poo and where he really shines because he's still one of the best characters in Eternal Evolution. Now, first off, we're gonna talk about his skills. So what is so good about on Poo? Well, the main reason we're using him is because of the passives here. He's super good in conjunction with other summoners. When you have this haunting passive on death and summoned creatures are included with this, they have an 80% chance up to higher chances if he has accuracy to instantly explode, dealing damage to a percentage of on whose attack and also reducing enemy regeneration. The reason why this is so good is because, well, just massive damage with this because all your different summons from let's say Mooka, Sorvali, uh, Kalaza, Senway, Daniel, any summoner in the game whenever they die or summons, the summon units die, is going to do extra damage which makes it so that he does a ton, a ton of damage, okay? And if you happen to have the higher exclusives, um, then they have additional chances to get Corpse Explosion which is the haunting passive here, and you have a chance to potentially get bonus effects from it, which is really, really insane, okay? On top of that, we have him stacking additional attack, which is really, really powerful, and additional damage potential. We have him potentially summoning actual characters, and we can actually disable or imprison targets with these summoned units, although we're really using them to detonate, pretty much. And then his ultimate is an AoE unit, AoE skill rather, around him to stun and dealing pretty massive damage and also blowing up all the different soul guards, which is the summon that Anpu does. And important note, he cannot crit. So damage inflicted by Anpu cannot crit. This is an important thing to note for his build. And that's the next thing we have to talk about. What is his build here? Well, the main thing you're going to want to prioritize is attack. The secondary thing you're going to want to prioritize is accuracy. Now, depending on who or where you're using him, who you're using him with, you might want additional accuracy. But the main reason I want accuracy is to increase this chance of the haunting passive to hopefully 100%, okay? And this scale of justice also increases as much as we can, and of course, actually inflict the stun with the accuracy, okay? But most often, I just care about the damage because the content I'm using him really, I just care about the damage that he's dishing out. So go full attack, 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 and I generally go for damage reduction if I can find it in the substats or additional flat attack or percentage attack. It's very simplistic. And then anytime I can get it, I get a little bit of accuracy in the substats as well. Okay. As for the exclusive on Anpu, I feel like we should talk about this a little bit more because actually I think it's one of the best exclusives in the game, particularly as exclusive 30. The exclusive 10, exclusive 20 is really not that hard to acquire, but I want to focus on the exclusive 30 here. So when you get the exclusive 30, you actually get the chance, a 15% base chance, and if you have increased accuracy, it increases more, to generate an additional corpse explosion whenever we get someone that dies and we actually detonate with that corpse explosion. This is crazy strong. Not only are you gonna get that additional chance, but you're also gonna get the additional stats. Anpu is certainly one of the most important exclusive 30s in the game. In fact, I should have done it far sooner than I did already. Now let's talk about where you could use him and where I'm using him. The first place where I think he's really, really solid in is Mirage Space and arguably the most important dungeon in the game because it actually has the Marauder set, which is a critical set for all your different displacement type characters and also the ones um, specifically Northion and the Assassins because Northion becomes a completely different character with the Marauder set. But the reason why we're going to be using him is pretty straightforward. In this dungeon, you're going to need to be able to avoid a lot of the spinning blades this guy activates. And in order to do that, you need the knives protection with the summon units that you have. So you oftentimes run characters like Mooka, Sorvali, etc. And with a lot of summons on the battlefield, you run Anpu, period. If there's summoners, if you're running Daniel, if you're running these type of characters, you want an Anpu in there because this damage skyrockets, okay? And this is only the first iteration of, let's say, a summon team. The second place that I would highly recommend him being used, and this is more of an early game spot, but it's going to be the Ancient Altar, okay? The second team with the Demon Supplicant is going to prioritize summons when they use this big heavy hitter, 
And although it doesn't really do a ton of damage all that much when you're in that mid game or late game, when you're early game, this can actually be a heavy hitter. So you do want summons and Anpu can absolutely decimate in terms of detonating those summons and doing massive, massive damage. The third place and arguably the most important place on the list is going to be Crimson Abyss. Now, I have only just recently re-geared my Anpu, which is kind of why I'm doing this video. And in fact, I haven't re-geared anyone on this team in a couple of weeks, so I could probably push a little bit higher. However, this is an extremely important place to get additional Hero XP, Soul Rublite, and you're going to use them in here pretty much always with Sorvali and Daniel. Oftentimes, the kind of more efficient comps are going to use someone like Zyda in the front row because, well... She has options to fully heal herself, and she's going to be the tank that provides additional um, bodies for the boss. But overall, Anpu's going to work really well and oftentimes do the highest DPS here. Another really, really powerful combo is going to be in the arena, because in the arena, we're going to find that Anpu and Sorvali actually work extremely well together. Now, I personally am not using them right now uh, in my classic arena, but in my galactic arena, I am in a summoner team, right? I'm using Mooka. Daniel, Sorvali, and Anpu, and he was really, really good as a combination with Sorvali in general. Uh, that's just going to be the best combination with Anpu, but in particular, uh, in any sort of scenario where summons are going to be good, or if you have other summoners on your team in your arena comp, then that's going to be great as well. And lastly, uh, the other area where I think he's really, really solid in, and I found a lot of success, uh, I guess there's actually two more areas, is first off, Twilight Lands. Any situation where you need summon units like uh, the summon battle here, oftentimes using Anpu plus Daniel is gonna be a really powerful combination. And then the other area, and of course, by the way, I, I wanna mention this actually before I leave off from the last area, uh, if you have Northion, you don't actually need Anpu unless you get to chapter 16. Just something to consider. Uh, Northion does replace pretty much everybody in Twilight Lands. <laughs> but the last place I want to mention is going to be the guild challenges or the guild hunts in particular, not the guild challenges because those are actually uh, two separate things. But the guild hunts in the turbine here, oftentimes going through here and using your Anpu. It's going to be a very, very powerful uh, character to use with all the other summons because summons do additional damage to the turbine, and so you're going to want to use your summon characters. So overall, basically, Anpu is a core staple in every situation where you're going to want summoners, and he's going to be someone that you're going to want to build out because the summon areas or the areas where you want summoners are generally some of the harder pieces of content and need a little bit more dedication to actually beat them. But... That's the whole guide for Anpu. Hopefully that was helpful, guys. I know there are a lot of people out there that haven't particularly built out a lot of these triple S's here or are kind of newer to the game. So I figured I'd make a video on Anpu. I'll probably continue to do uh, videos on several different uh, triple S characters that I find very prominent within the game. If you enjoyed, leave a like on the video and I'll see you all for the next one.